The complex life of the city goes roaring and rattling along on many different levels simultaneously. High above the windy streets, a very special breed of men are putting the skeleton of a skyscraper together. Most of these men are American Indians. When it comes to building skyscrapers, the Indians hold down the highest jobs and get the highest wages. They earn whatever they make. had no nerves at all, but they have moods, like everybody else. Some days they just don't feel like going up. Call it instinct, call it premonition. Whatever it is, nobody questions it. The man who feels that way stays down, and somebody else goes up in his place. After all, there's no particular point in taking chances. working on a job, the Indians live in Brooklyn. You will find them on their favorite camping grounds, the Spar and the Wigwam, two bars on Atlantic Avenue. Most of these Indians are Mohawks from the Conewaga Reservation in Quebec. Some bring their families to New York with them and gradually settle down here. But for others, Brooklyn is a home away from home. Friday nights they make the 12-hour drive back to the Indian Reservation in Canada where their wives and children are waiting. Meanwhile they live like bachelors, amusing themselves in simple ways to forget how lonely they are. If you leave the Indian hangouts and ride further down Atlantic Avenue to the river, you'll find yourself in the Middle East. You can buy anything here, baklava, 
Arabic furniture, Syrian pottery, rosewater pipes, even an oud, an instrument you strum with the feather of an eagle. It was popular among the troubadours in medieval times and is still used today. Even with the backdrop of skyscrapers to remind you that you're still in New York, there are places here that are more like Baghdad than Manhattan. Armenian restaurant, and once you're inside, New York seems very far away indeed. The people here have brought their own country with them, and everything's the way it was back home. On this particular occasion, the owner was able to persuade a well-known belly dancer to perform for his guests. Her name is Morocco. She holds a master's degree in Spanish, can speak six other languages, and swears in Arabic. After her performance, Morocco leaves for work in a Broadway nightclub, stopping on the way at a beauty parlor which caters to showgirls and which is open 24 hours a day. But on Broadway, everything is open 24 hours a day. Times Square, the gay white way, popularly supposed to be the heart of show business. But I noticed that actually only the movie palaces are here. The theaters where plays are performed lie on shadowy side streets. They are really all off-Broadway. On Broadway, too, you will find dance halls like the Palladium, where the latest steps from Latin America are introduced. Here began the mambo and the cha-cha. Right now, you may be watching the birth of a new dance craze. Who knows?
Broadway, glittering and tawdry, a mecca for pleasure seekers from all over the world. Why should it be so exciting? I don't know, but it is. I was surprised to find that a Park Avenue address is not always fashionable. Uptown, the elegant apartment houses give way to El Barrio, a Puerto Rican neighborhood. Here, the young people lead a healthy outdoor life on the rooftops of the rat-infested tenements where they live. They tie an old razor blade to the tail of a kite and try to cut the other fellow's string. Puerto Ricans are a gay people, fond of dancing and singing. They also like to train pigeons. They let the pigeons go and are always a little surprised when they come back. In the streets, almost anything can happen, and usually does. It's supposed to be the toughest neighborhood in New York. But not everybody in El Barrio is a gangster or a junkie. A lot of nice people have to live here, too, simply because they cannot afford to go anywhere else. Their lives are a constant struggle to live decently in spite of their extreme poverty and they dread the lawlessness and violence around them, never knowing when it may strike their own families and destroy them. and hardship. These Puerto Ricans are the latest to be flung into the melting pot, and no doubt their descendants will be prosperous and happy. But being melted is an agonizing experience. It takes all the courage these people have to endure it. process of survival, they reach out for anything that might help them. Some shops, like this botanica, 
deal not only in religious objects, but in other more dubious realms of the supernatural. They sell skull-shaped candles and devil's caskets for casting spells, supply the objects needed for voodoo ritual, magic powders and amulets guaranteed to ward off the evil spirits and bring good luck to the wearer. Even a drug called Contra el Trabajo to save a man from the evils of work. In the midst of all this misery, I found a strange phenomenon, a man known as Monsieur John. He's a very wealthy, very cultured person, who lived in a French chateau before the war. Now he not only shares his money with the poor of El Barrio, he also shares their life. He asks nothing of them in return. Perhaps all he wants is to show these unfortunate people that somebody from the world outside really cares what happens to them. <laughs> 